Hey everyone, today I have something brand new to show you that I've been developing for the ROG Ally. It's an application that will work alongside Armory Crate and brings you lots of power customization options for your power profiles. This will help you save battery life and even increase performance up to about 20% when on battery. And we're going to go ahead and dive right in to how you can use this application right after the break. Okay, so I am proud to announce the first public release of BSL Tools ROG Ally Edition. Like I said, this is something I've been developing for the last three weeks as part of my ultimate Windows guide for the ROG Ally. If you haven't seen that and are a new ROG Ally owner, or if you want to find out how to get the most out of your Ally functionality, please check it out. You can download the application from my GitHub repository, which I've linked in the description. Just go to the releases section and then download the latest installer.exe file. Once this is installed, you can go ahead and open it up and then choose a folder to extract it to. Once it's extracted, go ahead and open File Explorer, browse the location you installed it, and then you'll want to right click on this and say run as administrator here or uh, go to properties, compatibility, change settings for all users and then run this program as an administrator. Note that this application will only work on the ROG Ally. It does not work on other devices. Go ahead and open it, and you'll be presented with a disclaimer that this is a free community-based software, free of malicious intent, but experimental in nature. You use this software at your own risk. Basically, this will use Rise and Adjust, which can result in bans with games that have anti-cheat software enabled. So, as the developer, I do not take responsibility for any damage or bans this may incur or hardware malfunctions. If you don't agree to these terms, then you can choose to not use the software and just press the exit button. Otherwise, you can click proceed and go into the application. Then you'll be presented with a welcome screen that says you can access the settings through the main menu or the system tray menu by right clicking the icon. Now you'll be presented with a little profile thing, but we'll get into that in a second. First, we're going to talk about the hotkeys. So this has five different hotkeys you can set up. They are for turning the TDP up and down by one watt. That also has a CPU boost toggle to turn it on or off, which it's on by default, and then also power matching. And we'll get into this a little bit, but basically this will make it so that when you're on battery, you'll have the same performance as if you were plugged in. So let's go ahead first and check out the hotkey section. Here it says you can add a combination of control, alt, or shift, and a number or letter. So optionally, you don't have to choose all three of them. In my case, I've just been assigning alt and shift, and then the numbers one through five. So for CPU boost, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and assign these to mostly to the D-pad. So I'm gonna choose one for this, Power matching toggle, I'm actually going to assign to the D-pad down, which I've assigned Alt-Shift-3. Profile toggle hotkey, this is going to be Alt-Shift-5 for me because I'm actually going to assign this to my left bumper um, as a secondary function. And then increase the TDP hotkey. This I've assigned to my D-pad right, which I have Alt-Shift-2 assigned to. And then the decrease hotkey, which is Alt-Shift-4. So that was kind of a lot of stuff to do. But basically that'll allow me then to go ahead and go up and down by TDP. You can see I'm currently on the performance profile and or decreasing by one watt as I use the D-pad left with the back button. Also, uh, now I can go up and turn off CPU boost or turn it on right on the fly. And then the same with power match power savings or max performance. So now you will have to configure these hotkeys in Armory Crate in order for them to work, which I've already done. But I can show you really quickly where you can go to do that. It's under settings and configure. You, I would recommend assigning them to gamepad mode and desktop mode in case you want to switch it while you're out of a game and you have it set to the auto profile. But inside here, you'll just go ahead and we'll go down to the directional pad. And then we're going to have to create macros for each one of these. So you go to the secondary function, tap A, go all the way to the right where combine keys is. Then you can go ahead and press X to add combination keys. It's going to make a new macro, which shows that it's blank. 
You'll then press Y to edit it. And then you can just add the combination and press enter. Oops, I'm sorry. And press B for back. Then you can just choose that macro. But in my case, I'm just going to go back. I already have this preset up with this macro three, which if we look here, is left shift, left alt, and the number one. So that's it for setting up the hotkeys, and you're welcome to just use just this portion of the software. You don't have to set up the rest of it. It's totally optional if you want to just use the hotkeys and change your TDP on the fly. So for example, if I go to performance mode, I can go up and down and change the TDP here, or change the boost, or change the power match setting to max performance. So. It's really up to you if you just wanna use just the hotkeys, but the other function of this does have some automation to it. So if you just wanted the hotkeys and you're fine with that, the next thing you could just do is change the notification position. So it defaults to just being right smack in the center of the screen, but you can toggle any of these sections here and it's gonna just call it up and let you see what it looks like. And just choose one that you like and once you're done with that, just click save. And now when I toggle, it'll be at the top center. So more into the automation is that we can create custom profiles with all of these options available to us. The first option here is default profile. This is going to be when you start up this application, it will automatically switch to this profile. In my case, I'm just going to say performance or actually, you know what? I'm currently on performance. Let's just say turbo say okay now if I exit it and come back see it's in turbo but I haven't configured any of the CPU boost or power match settings or the uh, TDP so it said it was not configured so that would be the next section is actually setting up the different portions of the profiles so Click on static TDP, and here you've got a minimum you can set of four TDP up to a maximum of 30. The default is 10 for the unplugged silent profile, but in my case, I'd like to use this for streaming, so I'm gonna set this to five, I think. Under the plugged in silent profile, I'm just gonna leave that at the default 10. You can also use the keyboard here, and it won't get in the way. So I'm gonna set the unplugged performance profile you know, because of being able to set this statically, I'm going to say maybe 12 will be my performance profile. I really don't do turbo on the battery mode as it stands with the default profile, but because I can change the TDP, I'm going to set the turbo to be probably 18. And I'll leave the default of 30 for the plugged in turbo profile. And you can skip any of these as well if you don't want to configure them. That's totally up to you as well. Let's say okay there. And so part of this whole setup is that hotkey for the profile toggle. So now I can switch between them and we can see that the TDP has been set up. These are going based on the fact that I am plugged in. So if I unplug, Now you'll see that it's going to follow the performance and turbo profile and silent profile that I set. So then the next step we're gonna to wanna to do is the CPU boost. And by default, CPU boost is enabled across the board. Now we don't really need it for most instances, except for maybe modern emulation. So when I'm on battery, I'm gonna uncheck all of these CPU boost options for the unplugged profiles and click save. Then next is the power matching, which we talked a little bit about before. So what this does is when your device is disconnected, there's a hard coded or embedded function of these APUs in that when it's disconnected, it will default to a power savings mode, but this can result in like about a 20% performance loss, depending on which game you're playing. It doesn't affect all games equally. So that 20% gain is different different in different scenarios, but I'm going to turn this on, on the battery profiles or unplugged profiles, 
and it's already on by default when you plug in. So as you plug in, normally the hard coding switches to what is considered max performance. And then when you unplug, it defaults to power savings mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save there. And then lastly, this other feature is the auto switcher. Now this is something that when turned on will enable power matching to automatically follow whether or not you're unplugged or plugged in. So that way, if you wanted that high performance on battery all the time without having to toggle it with a hotkey, you could just enable this here and then it will respect it and follow it across any profiles that you connect to, whether they are the custom profiles that you configure in this application or the profiles you use through command center. Another thing I want to mention is that the profiles in command center do override any of the custom profiles that we have configured here. So for example, if I go and switch the custom profile, Now we're on silent mode. Let's go ahead and go to performance mode. So while this is being applied right now and it is respecting my CPU boost and power match settings that I set up, if I then change this to silent or manual mode and we go over and check what the current profile is, we are on the silent profile. So the command center will override the existing settings. This is by design, but this is also a good thing. What we can do here as a bonus is you could keep this in silent mode and then switch your performance profile on. What this will do for you is the fan curve will be respected as silent mode still. So if you want quieter fans, you can do that, but keep in mind your temperatures may get high. So this is a possible risk. Lastly, we have two more settings here, which are going to be run at startup. What this will do is create a scheduled task. It will run this application at startup. It is necessary that this application runs so that the hotkeys are functioning. Otherwise, none of this works. But when it runs at startup, the window, this main menu here will not appear. It will just be sitting in your system tray. Then lastly, we have reset all settings. This is going to remove anything except for your hotkeys. And it mentions this here as well. So if you wanted to go and reset all of the profile settings, then you can just do that by following this and still retain your hotkeys. If you click the minimize button here, it will just go to the system tray. And then in the system tray, if you right click, you've got a few different options. You get current profile, which displays whatever power profile you're currently on. I'm reopening the main menu. All of the main menu features are also here. And then lastly, you can report an issue. So this will tell you that you're going to be redirected to the GitHub issues page. And if you click OK, that's going to let you post any sort of issue or maybe a feature request that you would like in this application. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial for the BSL Tools ROG Ally Edition. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I will see you guys next time.